This is Matthias Clausen from the Electra Lab. He's our software specialist and expert in IoT and stuff and so on. And I'm Jens Nickel from Electro Magazine, editor in chief. And today uh, we focus on the Internet of Things. Yeah. And on first step uh, inside the Internet of Things. Yep. So we will so, talk about yeah. the real basics you need to know mm -hmm. because there are a few common things you will, whatever you use, come across. And as you may have read from the webinar's name, uh, we will use the ESP32 and also the ESP32 C3, the new new one, one of the new ones for the connectivity of small embedded devices. Yes, and maybe you are electro readers. Um, we have at the moment at the newsstand sales the May June edition, and there is uh, your brilliant car project in there, yes. or with already uh, two ESP thirty uh, two C three talking with each other, and today you can demonstrate something here on the table. Yeah. I've prepared a few slides. Okay. So, is that one? Ah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think um, for the ESP32 and the IOTC, uh, the subtitle is Let's Talk MQTT and JSON. And we will mm -hmm. come what it is later. Mm -hmm. Let's have a first look what we will use today in terms of hardware. And what you can expect. So, IoT, what is it? Um, I think that's something we should briefly talk um, during this webinar. I mean, if you if you say, yeah, IoT, it, it can mean many things. And also, what's the ESP32 or the ESP32 32 C3? The differences, the similarities. Um, MQTT, what is it? Where and when? Um, JSON, Java Serial Object Notation, what is that? And why is Java inside the IoT? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and required Arduino framework and libraries. So, what can you use if you have an Arduino project as a small first starting point? Um, also, any clouds today and, and practical example that's already okay. on, on the desk in front of us. You can't see it yet, but if you can switch to the side cam. Yeah, of course. We have prepared a few IoT devices here on the desk so that we can show you what it's doing. Uh, two buttons, one relay, so an extended version of the article. And this will be done in practical later. So let's have first a small walk around the theory. Mm -hmm. Um, used today for this presentation is an ESP C3 slash 12F kit from our store, currently out of stock, sadly. Um, ESP32 Pico kit version 4, that's in stock. Um, the Electra 37 in 1 sensor kit, the same as mentioned in the article, so a set of sensors. We just grabbed a few things out of it. Um, a, a deep board and some jumper wires, as you can see. So, pretty, pretty common stuff at least what you can see on the desk. Um, and in the back end, we used a Raspberry Pi 4, an SD card, and an enclosure. That's on the other side of the lab room. We are currently streaming. And yeah, that used a Raspberry Pi 4 as our MQTT broker. And what's that? We'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. But first things first, um, today we have giveaways, or you can win something. Um, an Electro ESP32 Smart Kit bundle. That's our first prize. And one winner alone, that's boring. So we have 10 ESP32 Pico D4 kits. And these are the versions with the female headers. Mm -hmm. So you can easily put in your jumper wires into the ESP32 and have your first experiments on your desk. That's a good solution. Uh, what do the readers have to do to win just, one of these? Just stay to the end. Our mm -hmm. kind support team in the back will draw the winners and will announce at the end of the show the winners. So, yeah, maybe a reason to stay. Hopefully not the only one, but... 
So let's start the ESP32 and the ESP32C3. So they are all family and yes, that's true. So the ESP32, I think, yeah, most of you will know what it is. It's a dual core MCU, has 520K of RAM, can have up to 16 megabytes of flash, has an IO metric, so you can have any function on any pin. We have talked about that in, in many, many articles in the past, how useful that is. Mm -hmm. um, comes with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth Classic, Bluetooth Slow Energy, uh, has a low power finite state machine, so a kind of low power processor. But to call it, it's not a full processor. And it has other in the support. So quite common used from, from many of our readers have them somewhere in the field or at home at least. Uh, the ESP32C3 is the new family member, one, one of the newer family members. It has a RISC-V core, to be more exactly RV32IMC. And uh, our colleague Steve Cording did an article about all these added letters at the end because we now have additions from A to Z. And for that, we have okay. also um, six or seven Zs in different combinations. I think the I stands for integer. Yes, that's the so, absolute yeah. base minimum. Okay. M is for multiplication, mm -hmm. so half a multiplication, and C is for compact code. Mm -hmm. So this is some, you can, you can see it like in, like in, if you want to compare it, something like in Cortex M plus on steroids. Mm -hmm. So not a Cortex M3 equivalent in terms of performance, but some, somewhere in that, but energy efficient. But I think most of our readers won't see a difference because no. it's all Arduino programming. So you have the same libraries, the same commands, yes. functions yes. to set up your, your Wi-Fi connection, for example. We come to that later. Yeah. We have here in the, we have here for the, for the buttons, we have an ESP32. Mm -hmm. And we have an ESP32 C3 that run the same uh, sort of same Arduino sketch. Just the pins okay. are mapped for the appropriate board, but the rest is the full, fully the same. So um, the C3 has the same I/O matrix, has also Wi-Fi, Bluetooth Classic, Bluetooth LE. It has an internal USB debugger, so you can single step that without the need to attach an external debugger that's built in. And it has also a built-in USB serial converter. But not with the normal Arduino environment, I think. Or currently, that's you have to dig around in the Espressive IDF to make that work. Okay. So you have to do a little bit of, of stuff. Is, is it working with platform I/O? Yeah, sort of. Mm -hmm. So the ESP thirty two C three and the debug stuff that's working, but it's more bound to the Espressive IDF. At Could the moment. be a subject for another webinar. I think definitely because yeah. if you if you do it right and there are some limitations, but you could theoretically for your production thingies could get rid of the USB serial converter in front of it. Mm -hmm. You just need the USB serial converter in front of it for the programming, and only in the case that the USB debug interface, the JPEG, JTAG bridge is not configured to be connected. So it might be quite interesting, um, and it has. has as the ESP32, also the Arduino support inside. So, and they, yeah, you just switch the CPU and it will do the rest on the back for you fully automatically. We have a small question uh, about MicroPython. Does it al also run on both? Uh, should. Yeah, should. Um, for the ESP32 C3, you may expect some minor mm -hmm. pickups. Oh, we have the poor sound quality. Uh, Maybe you speak a little bit louder. I do my I, okay. I, I do my best. Okay. We had to do some last minute change to the sound setup. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, Win Windows and audio that's that's not a good solution. They are they are not friends in, in the, this current okay. setup. So for whatever reason, the laptop went fine. Mm -hmm. Audio quality was good, and mm -hmm. well, another platform, another hiccups. <clears throat> okay, MicroPython. Yeah, the hum in the background could be a ground loop that we currently have. Mm -hmm. as, we have as we are using currently an analog connection between the microphones and the yeah. well, um So back to MicroPython. Yes, yes. Um, running, yes. Um, may expect some hiccups. As also with the ESP32, it took a really, really long time to get that sta stable, call it that way. But yeah. 
some white noise. <clears throat> yeah, we need to fix that mm. sadly later. Mm. Um, at the moment, there's nothing we no. can, with the current setup, we can Let's do. Let's switch to the next uh, sheet. Yeah. So these are the internals. You can see they, they look similar, and they have a lot of stuff internally similar. And interestingly, some components that are not that often used, um, I said there's the USB VUX stuff, um, and the ESP32 is, uh, is the uh, Phoenix State Machine, the LaPorse CPU. And the C3 shares a lot of the peripherals from this, we call it bigger browser, the ESP32. So it's quite nice. You have the same features, same feature set. Um, the 32 C3 is cheaper. So mm -hmm. ideally for IoT devices that you will put millions of in, in beef. And it's intended as an ESP8266 replacement. So it's quite nice. Um, but let's come back to the to our project. Yes, MQTT and JSON. So that's something like envelope and letter. And we will uh, yes, as a um, um, recapitulation, um, the ESP first ESP32 is talking to our relay station. That's our server, our broker. Yes, and then the message goes to the next ESP32, and then the message yeah. goes to all devices that are connected to the broker and have shown interest in those messages. Yes, that's the interesting uh, matter about MQTT. So it's a public publish subscriber model. Yeah. So it's it's like uh, magazines that are shipped out directly from the printer to the subscriber. Only so those the, who are interested yeah. get those, and those are, who are not interested won't get those. So the sender is not um, directly sending something to one receiver. It just sends out a message. It publishes a me message, mm -hmm. and all receivers who are interested in that topic receives that message. Yes. Yeah. So um, in, in client terms, it's quite efficient. You only mm -hmm. get what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with any bug that you don't want mm -hmm. to. And yeah, that's that's quite nice and it's quite yeah. common. Um, so MQTT, um, as we talked, MQTT is the, just the envelope for the data. So mm -hmm. MQTT doesn't care what you would like to transport. Um, it started as message queue telemetry transport. And since 2013, MQTT does done for nothing or just MQTT stems to MQTT. So there's yeah. no yeah. other meaning behind that. Um, I said it works with a publish subscribe structure. Um, it uses a broker. So somebody that takes care of the logistics. Yeah. Um, for example, it's, uh, Eclipse Mosquito. So that's also what we have run on the Raspberry Pi. And current version uh, for MQTT protocol wise is version 5. You have 3.1.1 and 3.1. So the 3.1 mm -hmm. is the legacy one around. Um, the Arduino library support features from the 3.11 set. Mm -hmm. And with the new 2019 released uh, version 5, there have been a lot of yeah, features being added that were needed for the IoT device that make it, made it really useful to, to use. Because it's five. actually an, a quite old protocol. I heard it's, it was invented for some uh, engineers working as at an oil refinery or something like that. I it, think IBM was involved. Yeah, it came from IBM. Yeah, and yeah. yeah it's yeah, it's proven technology. So, okay, so so okay. to speak. And and okay, this MQTT uh, protocol just ensures that the messages are sent in the right way. And yes. that the um, receivers can subscribe to the to the messages, but it doesn't care what you send. So you just give some bytes to your library; it will be sent out. And on on the other uh, controller, you also have a software library, and, it, um, and you get these bytes back. But you can have your own byte protocol. You can yeah, what, send what, whatever you want. Whatever, yes, whatever you want. Um, and with whatever you want, the problem is mm. interoperation between devices becomes mm. really, really hard. Mm -hmm. If everybody talks, this, so we have our envelope, and if everybody mm. puts his own language inside that, connecting devices from different sites and different sources that should exchange data becomes really complicated. So we need something on top, which also yes. ensures the and, com compatibility. 
and, and kind of and kind of agreed data exchange format. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where JSON comes in. Mm -hmm. JavaScript object notation. Um, it's yeah, an an open standard for for file format. So for save and also that means for that data interchange. Mm -hmm. So if you put something in a JSON file on whatever system you put it to another system, it also talks fully compliant JSON. Mm -hmm. They can understand each other. Mm -hmm. No matter if they go on Linux, Windows, Java, MicroPython, as long as there is something that can interpret or translate JSON into something that the machine can later understand and, and, and process, it's not a problem. It's it's fine. Um, also, um, it uses human readable text, so you don't have a kind of binary gibberish around with just a few bits flipping around. You have actual text that a human can read and also debug. That's of course an, an advantage. So here you can see in the example how how does it look like? Uh, you, you always have properties and and um, and the data. Yeah. So for example, ESP32. That's the data yep. belonging so, to the property MCU. Yeah. And, and the, so on. And the interesting thing is you can see that there are strings inside that there are. Mm. For example, the core count doesn't have the quotes on top, so that means yep. that's an integer. Mm -hmm. Or for the USB, you have the true or false that will translate back into a Boolean. Mm -hmm. So that's quite nice to exchange data that way. Yes, and that's why it's called object notation, because you can um, unpack it um, on your processor in an, in a, in an object mm -hmm. with properties and data again, yeah. and the other way around. And it's not just like used mm -hmm. by the uh, the IoT devices, but it's also one of the core technologies for the current web sites mm -hmm. and then web data exchange. Many many things are exchanged during, uh, using JSON. So, and for the web browser, JSON every browser with a JavaScript engine can easily pass okay. JSON text or object files, vice versa, and, and from both directions. So it's it's quite easy and quite common to use that. So where are we next? So the ESP32 on the Arduino framework. Um, to make it work with MQTT and um, JSON, it's just a matter of libraries. So basically two libraries that you will need to include, one for the uh, MQTT part, and we used the PubSub client by Nico Larry. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the JSON, we used the Arduino JSON. So, those mm -hmm. are two common libraries uh, that's also mentioned in the article um, and used for many projects. And for the Arduino JSON, we get a whole bunch of documentation. And there's, yeah, also if, if you have something that's not as intended, look around, you usually find a solution. So I think that changes. Yeah, I think that looks better. Um, so, those two are uh, the ones that we had we had used for the pubs uh, for the for the MQTT. There are a few other libraries, and depending on their state, they may or may not as feature complete or even more feature complete than the pubs are fine. But as I said, currently, I haven't seen an an Arduino um, MQTT library that's supporting the version five features. I think it's very common. Yeah, the one from Nick O'Leary. Yeah. Um, so. Let's come to the point cloud services. So there is no cloud, it's just somebody else's computer. Yes. And that's something to keep in mind. There is no mm -hmm. magical thing somewhere mm -hmm. hidden. Some, some, I mean, there is a computer somewhere. Mm -hmm. You never know where and if. <laughs> that's, and if it's already around or if it's just missing or broken or whatsoever. But yeah, it's just another system, just another server. So a cloud service. It's just another system that's maintained and operated for you. And it's a question, will you really, do you need to put data through that system? Is, 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 it, is the whole system and the whole cloud provider trustful enough to do that? So, so the common ones um, that you have uh, is the uh, Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and the interesting part is all-town MQTT, sort of. 
Um, you can use JSON for the data exchange. Um, they use um, or they provide a vast set of services and automation. So if data comes in, your cloud service provider is able to do some actions, save uh, the data for you into a database, uh, send out other messages, maybe an SMS, whatsoever. And that's their service and they're on top. And that's also what you're paying for. So they don't come for free. So um, they will cost mon monthly fees. And the top MQTT sort of. They talk enough MQTT to let your devices connect to them. And they don't talk enough MQTT to be fully compliant with the MQTT standard. Mm -hmm. So call it kind of a subset. So and features that MQTT in version 5 offers at some of these cloud providers are something you have to pay extra for. Okay. So like um, message sharing, like device is not reachable, but you need to push a message to the device. For example, Amazon has a service that's the sharing, and that's something you pay for. And, and an MQTT broker or on, on, on Mosquito, you can just say uh, this message should be retained and will be delivered if the client connects to the top topic is that the last message that was there. But I think just to show some some data you collected in your house or somewhere in the field, there are other uh, platforms like ThingSpeak or OpenSense Map or something. If, if, so if, you, if you have don't any, have to go to these big no. companies. No. Also, if you have Home Assistant at home, mm -hmm. they talk also MQTT. Mm -hmm. So. That's, that's the, the base of all what you can see. There are also other cloud providers, alternatives to those big three, that talk fully compliant MQTT. So question is, would you do and then the login? For example, if you go to the, to the Asia world and mm -hmm. build all your application mm -hmm. from the Asia world, mm -hmm. you can't just swap to another one. Mm -hmm. You're bound to that. And if mm -hmm. they raise prices for, for whatever reason or, or reduce the services, well, you have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you have a kind of vendor lock in, and mm -hmm. that's, yeah. So, but enough text. I think we will do some live examples so that you can see yep. that it's not that complicated. I have to do some restarts for the MCUs so that they connect to the Wi Fi network here. So that's okay. Um, this one is also, it should be also okay. Yeah. So what we are going to do, so you can see that's also from the article forward. Um, we will have a um, device that acts as a button. Mm -hmm. So this will, this device. Uh, See no short circuits. This will this device, this ESP32 C3 acts as a button, and this button will at the end trigger a relay. Okay. So we can see the state here. Um, so it sends a message to the broker. The broker collects the message and push it to all the relays that are interested in that specific topic. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's just one relay. So it's quite simple. Um, and on the other side, the relay itself will send back a message of its current state to all the other, to the MQTT broker from different topic. And all our switches are also subscribed to that topic. And we'll get the state feedback. So okay. So we'll send data forth and back or messages forth and back. And that's quite. And what is this uh, red light? So this, yep. this indicates off. So yep. you can see the. A relay, red state is off, green state is on. You can see both buttons um, have, uh, can let me see, um, also show red. So that's, they have gathered the information and replicated it for their LEDs. Mm -hmm. What we now do, if we press one, um, if we press one button, the state change will be transmitted. You hear a little click, the, the, the turn screen really turns on, and the state is also replicated to the other button. 
interesting now is if you now disconnect one button and reconnect. Mm -hmm. So the message we just sent to the broker is published. Yes. And I said on other services, you would have to have an extra fee to retain messages. And I've said this message should be retained on our mosquito broker. So if we disconnect, never do live stuff, our first button and reconnect it for 10 seconds. Come on, reconnect. It mm -hmm. will grab the last message that was there. It's, okay. So it's connected yeah. and the broker says, hey, for the mm -hmm. topic you are currently you subscribe, I have the last mm -hmm. message for you. Here mm -hmm. is it, take it. Okay. So that's quite nice. Yes, that's a cool mechanism of the MQTT model. And in version five, you can also say how long a message should be valid. You can say, okay, I see. This is a message. This is my last status, and it's valid for one hour. So it will mm -hmm. be delivered for the next 60 minutes to okay. all new connecting devices. Okay. And after that, it doesn't retain, but that's mm -hmm. a version five feature. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, quite simple. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sort of quite simple. Um, so we can. Cool. <laughs> the nice thing is we can add more buttons. Yes, it's just and also more relays, of course. Yeah, but then it's, mm. then it gets complicated. Okay, because which feedback for which button do you have? Yeah. If, if you have multiple relays that send mm -hmm. feedback, mm -hmm. uh, every I mean then at that point every button needs to connect and subscribe to the topic for that certain relay it wants to control. Okay, if you want, you can control multiple relays mm -hmm. that should all have the same output. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Mm -hmm. But at the end, the question is who's sending back what data and at what point do you need some intelligence in between? Yeah. And intelligence in between, the easiest way to do it at home is not using Node-RED, for example. So that can also be connected to an MQTT broker. You get messages, can pass them, and have a little fun with that. So. Uh. We can have a look at the code. I think we have some minutes time. And I also can show you a little code. So we have here the code for the push button for the ESP32. So the pin definitions are here, what button to use, uh, what pins are for red, blue, and green. Uh, for the ESP32C3, you can use the same code, just um, put on the, or just adjust the pins, that will work fine. Interesting uh, is the topic in and topic out. So to what topic do we need to send our data? So where do, yes. we, where do we want to publish? So many multiple devices can publish to the same topic. Yes. And multiple devices can also subscribe to the same topic. And we are yes. also subscribing uh, to the topic relays. A um, little bit of definitions and the whole magic we are doing is let's the reconnect. So this is a call. Um, okay, this code segment is a callback. So whenever we get a new MQTT message, this will be called if for a topic we have to subscribe to, and then we can process the message itself. The message itself, you know, is JSON, so we do the JSON parsing. JSON parsing for the Arduino. If somebody is interested in stuff, how JSON parsing, uh, sending, and putting away or around that, may leave a comment or, or then we can do an webinar made for that. So, or, so that's actually the interface to your MQTT library. So the MQTT library will call this function. Yeah, but when it has received uh, one message. Yeah, and as you can see, yeah. you will just get the payload. The, the, and, and, and the, the bytes, the, yeah, the bytes, bytes in one row. Yeah, yeah. And, and just the links. So mm -hmm. how many bytes you can read from that. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you have to construct whatever you send back to something that the MCU can understand. Mm -hmm. And I know that's JSON, 
So I will just grab all my data, do the deserialization, and then get can yeah run around the code and just say okay, give me in inside documents there's something called state and give me please the value of that. Okay, so that's that's quite easy. Um, the code is also online on GitHub besides the article. I think um, yeah. <laughs> I can see we, we have one interest. So mm -hmm. if, if there are more, please let us know. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is if you uh, don't have an, an JSON, if you don't need, or if you don't, if you're just sending data and it's just simple data, you can also skip the Arduino JSON library completely mm -hmm. and just do a little bit of string operations. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's a diff mm -hmm. completely different topic. Mm -hmm. It's not for today. Um, yeah, and also sending data is, is quite simple. We will just construct a JSON document, hand it over to our MQTT client, say what topic we want to talk to, and just send the bytes as they are. And in theory, you don't have an. Yeah, there are some questions in the chat. So pub is server and sub is host. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah. um, for, for MQTT, don't, don't look at the server host stuff. Just see it in, in um, interested messages I like to receive and destinations I want to set or, or, or topics I want to, to throw messages in. Mm. So the clients can receive messages and the clients can also send messages. Yes. And the broker just Forwards it, so yep. it's just, it, it, the broker is not interested at all. The no. broker doesn't serve anything. The broker no, just is, is just forwarding messages. Yeah, just mm. he's just what your post office is. Mm -hmm. You send or you you. It's like like the the old in, in, mm. the the uh, automated mass mailing mm. sort of, but for the IT world. Mm -hmm. So. Um, how can we handle when the Wi-Fi connection is out? Uh, um, asks one of the if if viewers. if your Wi-Fi connect if you can't reach your broker, you will get an error message. So that's mm -hmm. something the code doesn't handle. So it's mm -hmm. it's not hundred percent production ready. It's mm -hmm. article ready. Mm -hmm. um, if the Wi-Fi is out and you will send or you try to send to a broker, you will get an error message. Mm -hmm. If your Wi-Fi connection gets lost by just listening or subscribe to, subscribe to messages. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to check if you're online or not. The ESP will, if you, the ESP has a callback if your Wi-Fi connection state changes. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more advanced stuff. So there are two people interested in, in deserialize and JSON. Maybe you can, you can show us the, um, the paragraph again. So I think deserializing. Yeah. Um, deserializing. So you get somewhere a message. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the in the payload in the in the payload somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you will just collect all the data, um, hand hand it over to an deserialize function. You build you build an, an JSON document. You will allocate a little bit of memory for that one. That's needed, mm -hmm. and then you will say, okay, this are this are my bytes. This should be valid JSON. Please try to parse it and make something useful out of it. What is this 32 here? Um, I've allocated 32 bytes okay. for, the, for the JSON document. Okay. So I know I'm mm -hmm. not having that big data flowing mm -hmm. around. So a little bit more conservative on this one, but yeah. Okay. And then, then the, the interesting line is, is 120 deserialization yep. error. And, um, the result of this function is, is an error. Yep. You will. And, and, and this is, uh, if, if the deserialization works, mm -hmm. you don't get an error. Mm -hmm. Um, in doc, in doc, you will find mm -hmm. the result. The result. And then yeah. you can yeah. simply sort of simply mm -hmm. just say, no, sorry, just switch. Okay. Then you can simply say, okay, this is my finally passed JSON document. Mm -hmm. 
and now try to access a few properties that are in there. Mm -hmm. So you can check if the properties are there and it will grab your value out of that. Or if your properties are not there, you can check for that also. I haven't done that. So the, the parsing is, is really, really rudimentary at that point. What happens if um, I reserve two less bytes? For if, the if, you, if you reserve two less bytes mm -hmm. at that point, Close that. So let's say you reserve two, two, two less bytes. Mm -hmm. right. um, at this point, you will get an error. Mm -hmm. So the error depends. It's not just mm -hmm. a true or false, but you get an mm -hmm. error code like okay. out of memory, okay. um, invalid JSON, mm -hmm. or something else mm -hmm. that's happening. So you can pass for that. Currently, okay. I'm just looking, is there an error or not? Mm -hmm. so, it's quite simply done mm -hmm. at that point. So mm -hmm. you can do a lot more sanity checks. Yep. There's another question. Um, do you recommend some literature about JSON or are there some interesting websites maybe? Um, in the article, we have shown the, the JSON.org page. Yeah. Um, maybe it would be cool. Yeah. There's also a question about the article I mentioned it. At the beginning, it's the cover article of the May-June issue, and you can get it at the newsstand sales or in the Electro shop. Yeah. It's May-June edition. So you can, if you if you want to, to start with that, you can go mm -hmm. to, to json.org mm -hmm. and have a look around how is that constructed, mm -hmm. um, what types of values are in there, what types of mm -hmm data you can pack, pack into that, how the parsing should work, how a mm -hmm. valid document is. Yeah, we can put ourselves yep. into the pictures. How the <coughs> document should look like. So that's, for example, one starting point. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is, as this is mostly used in web technology, you might have a look at the um, JavaScript world for your mm -hmm. browser, because there you have the ability to build JSON object as uh, JSON strings, and also you can um, do um, parsing in those ways and see what's in there and how it should look like. Mm -hmm. It's quite simple. Yeah. So let's switch back to the. Yeah. So that's how it should look like. And um, for, for parsing a JSON document in an Arduino Uno is sufficient. It's working. You shouldn't throw megabytes of JSON documents okay. into that machine, yeah. but of course. For, for small JSON strings, that, that's fully sufficient. Mm -hmm. and, and 3 to 8, that would run. Don't expect, I said, memory constraints and processing mm -hmm. constraints, but mm -hmm. you can do JSON on mm -hmm. those machines. You don't have to have an MSP32. And the nice thing also is, and that's why we used it also in the past, if we have, for example, an, an web application running on your ESP, mm -hmm. exchanging data over JSON between your browser and your, your ESP, for the browser, for the browser part, that's quite simple. And also the ESP can read it back. So that's also quite nice way. Mm -hmm. But that, that's, that's not fully focused on the topic. Um, but as I said, if there are wishes on, on that one, we can do it. In a, course, training, webinar, whatever you like. Or maybe just join us for the next uh, lab talk, if you like to. Yes, we can uh, feature it in the lab talk on June the 30th. Yep, after the embedded world. So mm. we will bring back some news from the show. Yep. Yep. Um, and There's another question. Yes, can we use VS Code instead of Arduino IDE for the new ESP32? Yes, you yes. can. Yeah. Um, not officially supported, but editor-wise, it's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. a bicycle and a rocket. So mm -hmm. um, completely, yeah. I mean, the, the how, how to put it nice. The Arduino IDE is not the best in class editor you can get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, yes, you can, and also. It should be possible. Um, yeah. Um, you can use 
if you don't want to use platform IO, what you can use with the Arduino editor is say use external editor and open your project just in Visual Studio Code if you just want to get syntax highlighting. And if you want the full featured full set, you can use platform IO. But for platform IO, you have made to use some external links to make it work. I'm not sure, did I? No, only for the article, I didn't use that. I'm just thinking, did we show how to use this C3 with platform IO? I'm not, I'm not sure. In the first webinar, we talked about platform IO. Yeah, I mm. did the ESP32, and mm. I think I mentioned the C3. Mm. I, I think, but webinar platform IO, the coding with Visual Studio Code, somewhere back in the, if, if you see it on YouTube, somewhere in the back in the playlist. Mm. Um, Let's mention that. It's it's working, but with the Arduino framework, yeah, sort of. Maybe some rough edges left. After the webinar, I will put the source code up on GitHub, also the mm -hmm. presentation slides. Um, usually, I would have done it a few hours before, but due to some mm -hmm. unforeseen timing constraints, bank holidays, um, that has not happened. So after the, the webinar, the material will be around, so you can have yourself and go with it. So yeah, that's how it works. Um, and basically, the relay is just the opposite of that one. I mean, we can have a look at that. But that's uh, that should be that one. So, yeah, the code looks very similar. You can now see that yeah. topic in and topic out are mm -hmm. just the opposite mm -hmm. of each other. So you can see that topic in and topic out are just the opposite of what the buttons are doing. Mm -hmm. um, for this relay, it has two pins. Um, that's left over from the small circuits guide. It didn't make it into the small circuit guide, so we'll be, maybe it shows up online later, I think. But Yeah, you can see in in the end the the same structure um, for the uh, connection. So you have also here the same callback function that takes just messages, passes that, mm -hmm. um, tries to pass the document, and depending on what it reads, uh, just sets or toggles the relay. And if it has toggled the relay, it will send also JSON document back with the current state. So just the opposite of what the buttons are doing. Also nothing special, but runs nicely on an ESP32 or, or ESP32C3. Okay, so um, I think timing-wise, we are better than the last time. Yeah, there's a last question. Why do we have to use JSON format? We could just pass strings on and off. Yes, yes of course, we, we could, but yes. then it wouldn't be so flexible. Yes. So um, if you if you use your own if you use your own proprietary format, that's mm. it's up to you. You can mm. do that. That's that's absolute, absolutely no problem. But if you want to have it, uh, or if you want to, to spread it around more devices, or if you want to connect with this with home assistant or another mm. device that talks mm. um, MQTT. Um, yeah, at that point, um, yeah, if, if you want to aim for interoperability, it might get a little bit rough, but you could also just send binary zero and binary one for on and off. That's yes. also possible. That yes. be the shortest message yeah. at that point. So the nice thing about JSON is that you can parse it, that you can verify it, mm -hmm. and also you can use it in, in other applications that understand JSON. So, but it's it's fully up to you. If you want, there's there's another standard for interoperability used used in internet um, uh, um, devices. It's it's XML, but XML is not so compact. That's I think that's the um, advantage uh, of um, JSON. Advantage. I mean, at mm. least it's it's human readable. Writing mm. XML, XML also. 
depends. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, as I said, you can use your own formats. That's that's mm -hmm. fine. Absolutely. There's one question about security. Um, if you are if you are using MQTT, if you are using it outside of your lab, mm -hmm. um, yes, TLS is the common way. So the most of the MQTT brokers also mm -hmm. also have MQTT, MQ, uh, TLS, and SSL mm -hmm. packed on top of it. So yes. That's the usual thing. You can use certificates with the cloud providers. You have to use certificates and uh, TLS for the data transport. So otherwise, you would send uh, plain text messages. So that's the recommendation um, rolling out certificates. But if you're doing certificates, debugging problems with the certificates can be a real pain, especially with the ESP32. Because it just mm. say works, don't yes. work. So, yep. Yeah, um, I think we could should come to an end. We have ten minutes max, eleven minutes max left uh, at this point. Um, let's go back. Yep. We just yep. So those of you that have won will be receiving a mail after the show, as seen on the chat. Mm, OPC. Um, OPC is the, the S7 thingy. Um, yes and no. I'm, for OPC, I'm not 100% sure. I just had to connect to one OPC server once way back in my days, but mm -hmm. um, I'm not 100% sure. Could be, but I haven't done OPC extensively. So last slide, let's see how it works. We have some additional literature. So as ever, the um, lector webinar page. Uh, somebody has written a book, My Journey into the Cloud. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell a little bit about it. So uh, I think it's- it's, yes, it's, it's interesting that I, uh, discovered uh, MQTT so also so fast um, as, a, as a protocol. And I also was uh, fascinated by it because it's simple, mm -hmm. it, it, it works, um, it works since decades. And yeah, it's, um, it's, I think it's a very good system for small microcontrollers talking with each other. Yeah. And it's really, really supported by so many programming languages. So you don't have to, you are not, not, uh, not, um, um, you don't have to program microcontrollers. You can, of course, receive MQTT messages also by, by, um, software on your PC uh, or something. And, uh, yeah, you can really do a lot with it. Yeah. So last, really last thing is the announcements and what's coming next. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoyed this webinar um, so far, may have a look at the upcoming and innovative, innovative contactless technology to high resolution, high speed solar paste deposition on also on click meeting with our colleague uh, Clarence Balance on the 21st of this month, the same time, uh, 1600 CST. Um, and also look out for the Engineering Insights Episode 7. Uh, that will be uploaded to the Elector YouTube channel somewhere at or after the fair. So mm -hmm. gives you some impressions directly straight from the trade show floor with our colleague Stuart Cording. And we both also want to stream live from the show. Yes, it will be also yep. on shorter notice at that yeah. point. So. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the Elector TV YouTube channel. Hit the bell button so you get notifications. We will announce the stream at least a few hours before. Mm -hmm. And be sure we don't, we won't do it in the breakfast time. So yeah. it will be, I think, yeah. more in the evening uh, because we also want to walk around and mm -hmm. see what, what's going on on the mm -hmm. show. And if you are not going, or if you, if you miss maybe the live event from the embedded show, then step 
specify for a lector laptop FS support. Embedded, embedded world, embedded devices. Um, YouTube link in the slide. Or use the QR code. Um, that will be on the 30th of June, um, 6 p.m. Central European summertime. Yep. Also, if you yeah, want to join, feel free. So you get the latest news from the embedded show, or if you have something you may like to ask, also step by. Yep. And that should it be for this webinar. Mm -hmm. We have hit the, I think, 60 minute mark, almost quite, quite straight, more or less. Yep. All the materials on GitHub. And as we are, have been ordered, we should do the goodbye a little shorter than usual. Yes. <laughs> so see you next time. Um, then we put that small button on the yeah. side cam. Yeah. Enable the camera and hit.